Good morning, everyone. Uh, what I want to talk today about is one idea that links two big concepts. The first one is the main topic of today, of course, happiness. And the other one is science. Because science can't make people happy. Uh, I, I'm not talking about how the research or technology have contributed to our, our well-being or to get a better life. Uh, I, I'm talking about how the interaction with the whole scientific creative process make us happy. How the understanding of science or the solution of scientific problems generates happiness. Well, the, the history of science shows the great satisfaction felt by many scientists when they found out things or simply when they discover and understood nature. Uh, we all know the anecdote about Archimedes who was, uh, who was taking a bath when he found out his theorem and he felt such a satisfaction that he went down the streets of uh, Syracuse uh, shouting Eureka, forgetting to get dressed. Uh, well, Eureka means I found it, I, I got it. Another legend says that uh, Pythagoras uh, was so happy to discover his theorem that he made a sacrifice to the gods. And that was 100 oxen, which the Greeks called a ekathon. And we could find many other examples since ancient times to today. Uh, well, how, how this, um, cap, this kind of happiness can be produced is not yet clear, although we suspect that it is due to evolutionary reasons. Um, the, the pleasure from obtain, obtaining material rewards has already been test, tested by scientists in experiments with animals like monkeys or dogs. And this pleasure can be transferred to intellectual sex. And if we add these two ideas, and of course multiply the capacity for abstraction of a conscious mind, we, we could get stimulus for crea creative thinking. Understanding things in, gen uh, in general produces happiness, but the, the human beings are very complex and have developed complicated ways of understanding, such as science. Well, um, I think that the encouragement to, to think or to solve problems is one of the, thing, one of the things that make us humans. Well, but let's focus on the, on the main topic of my talk. The question is, can ordinary people, those who are not professional scientists, access that, that kind of happiness? To me, the answer is clearly yes, and the instrument to get it is a valuable concept linked to the enjoyment, and it is called the scientific edutainment. It's a, a form of entertainment designed not only to educate, but also to amuse. Uh, well, for, for the last eight years, I've uh, really enjoyed the privilege to work making people happy through this kind of interaction. I give talks and show experiments using the, the ideas of the scientific edutainment so people can see and feel the, the happiness that they own interaction with the, the scientific creative process produces. Well, I, I found that in this way, it is uh, furthermore possible to pass on to young people some of the most important scientific values, such as effort, tenacity, the search for stable results, or curiosity, among others. Well, as I've already said, how this happiness can be produced is not yet clear, but we, we have identified some elements that optimize this interaction and therefore they optimize the achievement of, of happiness. But um, before introducing these elements, 
I want you to have a look at this video that uh, helps to understand this special connection between science and happiness. That was the inspiring part of my talk. <laughs> well, the, the following elements can be recognized in the video we have already seen, and they are the basis of the scientific, what we call the scientific edutainment. Uh, the, the first is the interaction between people. Happiness is also a link that leads us to other people. Some scientific communication tools are spectacular, but dehumanize. For example, such as in which a mechanical device demonstrates a phenomenon, or those phenomena that are displayed as a prodigious knowledge of nature organization, regardless of how the, the, the human being discovers them. They can cause admiration to the public, but they have lost this special link between science and happiness that we have described. So the, the, the interaction between people is a key factor. The, um, the it, it is also important the interaction between a person and the scientific matter itself. So to do experiments with the hands, to touch uh, the um, real material, and moreover, uh, do experiments with spectacular and unexpected results. That helps to be willing to participate and also gives a feeling of intellectual success followed by a great satisfaction. Remember the, the boy at the, at the video who was so excited because they could see a flame on their own hands without burning them. So it was amazing. And um, other, other important point is the establishment of mental laws. Some scientific developments are easy to explain and to be shared with the audience. However, some others are too complicated or come from particularly abstract branches. The, the technical problem of communication in science is unequally solved. On the one hand, it is solved with solutions that totally give up science. Well, if you will not understand, Let's just do a visual science show. And on the other hand, there is a big obsession with precision. If it is not well explained, even in its smallest details, it's not properly communicated. Well, first of all, we should apply the, the fundamental rule of any entertainment that's not to bore. And we, we should avoid lengthy and incomprehensible explanations. They can maybe increase our prestige and make us look as very wise, but we are moving away from the receiver of the, of the message, which is actually the, the subject of communication. Well, uh, moreover, it is important that uh, the public has access to the basic logical structure that um, 
reach the conclusions. Uh, for example, like the, like the girls at the video that he, he learned that the chlorophyll consists of um, different pigments because they, um, they could see the colors of the different pigments on the plate in the, in the experiment. And uh, if, if a phenomena, if a phenomenon it, um, seems uh, incomprehensible or it remains unexplained, it could be, it could, it will surprise, but um, it will not bring this special kind of happiness. If we know the whys, we control what happens, and only then we can repeat it as many times as we want. And the, the last point is the approach to the role of the scientist. It is interesting that, um, that uh, people um, adopt the role the person, of the person doing science. How can we do that? Okay, with a simple costume or a reproduction of a specific location, like a laboratory, for example, or with a game to approach to the personality or character of the scientist. These ideas can help us get our goals. Uh, well, as a conclusion, I, I would like to say that only the proper application of these simple, in fact, ideas is uh, what makes possible the happiness that we, we have seen at the video. And using these ideas, we can engage people anywhere from three to 300 years old doing science and achieving happiness. In a world that will need more and more scientists and citizens that understand science, I think this idea is indeed worth spreading. Thank you very much.